Hey, welcome everybody. My name is Zelkanon. This is another episode for Smite Super Builds. So today's episode, as you can already see, is um, Damage Ymir. Uh, so right away we can tell our items are kind of hybrid-ish, but I'll go into that more in detail later. So uh, this is a little bit more unique build. Um, Ymir can be played in Conquest Jungle. I have seen it worked uh, many times before. Um, also seen it in Arena. Um, it's pretty effective. Uh, the reason why this can be done and he can get away with it is as he mirror levels, he has the highest HP per level. So when you're, if you have pure no items and you're level 20, you have estimated around 2,500 ish HP. Um, as you can see, we can only we only have one HP item right now, and we have an amazing 3,200 HP. So you can easily get away with being um, Mage Ymir. So let's go on with the items. Actives. Blink Ymir is the best way to go. Um, especially if you're fighting a, a non-aggressive team. You can quickly blink to your target and hit your 3 to freeze them. And then follow up with your, your basic attack. You can wall them, put a wall behind them. Or uh, what's most common is freeze them and then drop your ice carpet, which is your 2. Um, glacial Strike, that, I guess that's it. the real name of it. Um, a second active, you can either get, um, you can probably get like Creeping Curse, I move that on to Feebling Curse or Weakening Curse, whatever is needed. You could probably move on to Ages or Beads if you need it, um, but Sprint, Speed Ymir is the scariest Ymir ever. <laughs> It honestly, it really is. Seeing this huge frost giant just running towards you and you can't get away because you know he's going to freeze you and he's going to follow up with his ice carp and basic attack you or he's going to freeze you and ulti you and you're just going to be, you're just, you're just dead after that point on. So, uh, we have shoes of magi. I don't, I personally don't feel like cooldown reductions needed on Ymir, but you can if you feel like it. It's all personal preference. But I try to get the most damage output um, from Ymir, since with this build alone, um, you don't have the highest magical power. Uh, but I will tell you some great alternatives if you just can go straight power and skip the defense items uh, and such. So, yeah, she's a magi. We move on to Hide of Urchin. Try to get this early. Um, like I said before, this is more of if, you, if you want, you still want to be a little tanky. A, not a total paper cannon. Uh, this is a great item because you get your HP and mana. And with a passive, you gain, um, you know, 10 stacks, gives, gains you 20 protections, right? So, yeah. So you get 65 physical and magical protection. That's like two defense items right there. So uh, this is a really nice item if you feel like you need more defense and you want to be a little hybrid route. Really great item. Next, we have uh, Focus Void Stone. I would most definitely get this. You see it on almost all my mage builds. It's a really, really great item. Really high penetration uh, and great power and protection. So together we have 40 magical penetration. So that's really good. Winged Wand. Winged Wand is really scary on Ymir uh, because he gets extra health. On top of that, you gain that movement speed. But since we don't, we don't have the reinforced greaves that gives you... Um, what is it? Crowd control reduction? This is kind of close to it, so I'll go ahead and read it. When hit by a slow, you are immune to slows, and your movement speed is increased by 20% for 4 seconds. Only occurs once every 30 seconds. That's not bad. So, if you try to get slowed by raw, you know, for example, you'll be immune to that. And then you get your movement speed increased, so you can chase down raw or more people. So, it's a really great item. And we do get that little um, cooldown reduction. I forgot it had CDR and Winged Wand, sorry. But we do have cooldown reduction, so that's really nice. I like we, uh, Winged Wand on Ymir. I don't really like Winged Wand on any other god. Just personal preference, but it works well on Ymir. Bancroft's talent. Um, this works really well in your ulti. Um, or if you blink in and you take some damage already. So basically with this passive, the more, you know, I'll go ahead and read you gain an additional one magical power per one percent of your missing health. So, you lose thirty percent of your health. You gain more uh, power, thirty power. So, really great. Uh, also, high power. Um, the life steal. Yeah, I guess you don't you don't get too much use out of that with Ymir, I feel. But um, it's more for the passive and the high magical power. 
Rod Tahuti. Uh, Rod Tahuti. That's all it is. So, um, yeah. So, if you don't want Hide of the Urchin, I'll go ahead and get Polynomicon, since it's a pretty popular item for Ymir. Uh, it works really well as this passive. So, yes, this has gotten nerfed, but it's still really viable. It's still really strong. So, uh, I would switch this out with um, either Winged Wand if you don't like it, or switch it out with Hide of the Urchin. Uh, any other alternatives? Hmm. If you want even more cooldown reduction, you could probably replace uh, Winged Wand with Chronos Pendant. That allows you more sustain with your MP5 and more power, and you have 25% CDR, so more freezes for you. Wall of Absolution can work if you're fighting more physical people, and it still grants you more power. Okay, go at the real staff. If you want to be um, the pure HP and power, uh, Ymir, that's pretty scary in itself. Gym of Isolation could work as well. So uh, if you hit them with your ice carpet, they're slowed. Allow you to follow up with your one or three year old team. So those are some alternatives for, to that. So I went ahead and got the full stacks for um, High of the Urchins. And we could see overall our stats are pretty nice. We have 394 magical power, 154 physical defense, and 163 magical defense. And like I said, 3,200 HP. So overall, it's not too expensive of a build, but um, yeah, this is our nice movement speed of 460. Oh, another reason why um, Mage Mirror works really well is if we look at the skills, especially his ulti. Look at that ulti damage at level 20. 1,100 plus a percentage of your um, magical power. So. Yeah, look at that, look at that, look at that, 590. It also slows them when, when they're in there. Um, and moving on, the Ice Carpet, 370, plus Magical. Frost Breath, 210, plus Magical. And what I was talking about is passive. I'll go ahead and read it. All of your various abilities that affect enemies apply a debuff on the enemy called Frostbite. All of your various basic attacks against a target afflicted by frostbite do 100% more damage so it's like the old school polynom already implemented uh, <laughs> and then if you throw a polynom on top of that your basic attacks after an ability are going to hit really really hard so let's go ahead and test it on some of these minions here or mobs whatever you want to call these guys see basic attacks ace carpet next basic attack oh I didn't even see that so now we have red buff, so we have up to 471 power. Personally, I would probably go with more speed, so I would try to get orange buff for Ymir. Uh, just because speed Ymir is the scariest thing ever, <laughs> really. So let's go ahead and pop our magical might, bo uh, magical might potion. Sorry, not buff. There we go. 544, four. 638. Look at that. So next, some gold fury practice. Reason. Basics. Pretty high basics. Carpets. <laughs> 821. And for the finale, I'll go ahead and uh, go fight Raw. Okay, so keep a look out for that damage. 2000, there we go. Enough said. Meiji Mirror and Speedy Mirror is the scariest thing ever. So, hope this helps you guys that are interested in the uh, way of the Meiji Mirror. So, let me know how that works, and I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it, guys.